has now folks so fired up over tax hikes that they are taking action to repeal them. And Oregon groups opposed to what they call job-killing taxes just turned in more than twice the needed signatures to force a referendum. Box loads of them. It follows passage of a $733 million tax hike on corporations and people earning more than $125,000 a year. Pat McCormick is with Oregonians against job-killing taxes. Patrick, very good to have you on surprisingly strong results from what you wanted to get started here. Thank you very much, Neil. Glad to be here. Yes, we're very pleased. And the fact that we were able to do this in really two months' time, the legislature and the governor's office who had slowed the process, limited the amount of time available for us to collect those signatures, and we still were able, thanks to volunteers, uh, to be able to get twice as many as we needed to qualify the measures. So what happens now, Pat? Now you've got the signatures, now they've got to guarantee them, I guess, then what? The uh, process will allow them to be validated, and once that's done, it will set up a special election on January 26, where both of these measures will be on the ballot for Oregonians to make the decision. The legislature chose not to let the people make this decision. They decided passing the biggest tax increase in Oregon history could happen without voter involvement, but the voters have spoken and said they, they want to say in this. Well, as they did in California, and, and obviously this seems to be spreading, voters sort of usurping the governor and the assembly and legislature and taking matters into their own hands by rejecting what would have been pretty draconian tax hikes. The governor in that state, though, still argues, as I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're aware, Pat, that taxes are going to have to go up somewhere. You, you know, spending cuts alone won't take care of this. What do you say? Well, there are reserves that have not yet been tapped. There are resources available. The business community in this state actually worked with the legislators trying to persuade them to try some temporary broad-based revenue increases if they were necessary to get us through this current uh, economic recession. But they wanted to pass permanent taxes instead. And the pax taxes that they passed are just, as you say, draconian. Um, the state can, can pull all sorts of things with you, though, Pat. I mean, they can, you know, slowly review these ballots. They can make it painstaking. They can argue that a ton of the signatures are fake. And you know how this goes. How likely is it that, that you, obviously, you've got a comfort cushion here because so many more than anticipated signed on. But what are you prepared to do if the state balks at a lot of what you're trying to do? Well, we've been very concerned about the manipulation of the process that the legislature's been involved with since this was being considered in the legislature. They tried to change a century-old tradition of what the referendum means and change the yes vote that a voter would make to mean no and a no vote to mean yes. Uh, it was so confusing <laughs> that editorial writers across the state forced them to back off that. Then they hired private investigators basically to spy on our petition circulators in hopes of finding some violations of the law. And in fact, what they found was that we were complying, our volunteers and our paid circulators were both fully complying with the law. But they've obviously tried everything they can so far. The next thing we expect to see if these measures are quickly validated is that they will be trying to use their manipulated process that they created in the legislative session to write a ballot title that's favorable to the measures. Well, Pat, i got to admire you against a lot of odds here. The, the citizens are speaking in your state. So whether you're for or against what the government's doing, that's always neat to see. Um, Pat, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate being here.